think of April Fool's Day, it gives me a chill. That what kind of pranks people will be playing with others or doing anything. But when I actually try to recall, I don't have any bad memories around it. Basically, I was too kind to ever employ a ruse that would hurt the feelings of another person. And I was also too avoidant to uh, and I was also too avoidant to be a victim of any pranks. But when I think of the big chill that pranks give me, the only thing that I can think also is mass media. So name one of the top three sportswomen in India. Anyway. Yes. 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 So, when she turned 18, it was 2004. And I saw newspaper articles celebrating her birthday and talking about her accomplishments. And I was okay, this is nice. But when I saw the news next year, the next year the news was almost similar with the same age, 18. She's still 18 in 2005. And I saw the news next year, it is 2006. And she was still 18. And I was realized how hard it is to finally cross the age 18. <laughs> and then it changed after a year and it directly went to 21. But that gave me the realization that what, how mass media can tell anything around this story and the facts are not always being checked. So, anybody knows when Oni got married? In India, yes. You have watched the movie, right? 2003. Not bad. Yes, this guy is a good cricket fan. And also a Tony fan. And it was 4th of July 2010 when Tony got married. And I remember a newspaper article, only one out of two newspapers showed it. In 2009, that Tony got married. With a blurred face of Tony in the picture. No other person also there in that picture. It was the front page. This is a print media we are talking about. In a digital media, when things actually became like everybody can generate and everybody can create. You can imagine the amount of fake news and data being created. So in the in the spirit of Apple Fool's Day, you have to be mindful of what you consume and even more watchful of what you choose to believe or not. In any case of sponsors meetings, we have three rules that we'll be following today as well. First, please do not talk about sex, politics, or religion in a way that can hurt the sentiments of others. Secondly, please put your phones on silent mode or switch them off as you do that. And third, as you have seen the notice outside, don't enter or exit while there is a speaker on the stage. You can do so during the applause. Now the next speaker I'm going to invite on the stage is a woman who wouldn't need to reuse her views to make people help her execute her tasks. <laughs> and when she has decided for a goal, then that is enough. There is no fooling around for her followers. And the person she only needs a charisma and cool command of any situation. So please welcome on stage our president, Postmaster Harshita. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. A very, very happy April Fool's Day to you today. Who doesn't like pranks? Who doesn't like jokes? You know, putting salt instead of sugar, throwing dead lizards, not dead, or artificial lizards on your friends, or prank calls. It's so much fun. I did so many prank calls. Actually, this, uh, this April Fool's Day, I told my husband I was pregnant again. He was so shocked when he looked at my daughter because we have half a hands full, so he was really shocked and he looked like he's going to cry. So, April Fool's Day is so much fun. I love it. But sometimes I wonder. How much, like, how far should we go? How much is too much? Is there a line that we can draw? An incident happened to me a couple of years ago. Something that I look back to even today and I find it so humiliating and embarrassing. It all started because of one prank. I was in a mall with my friend and we were walking around in a store. And we were looking at all these clothes. And suddenly, my friend turned to me nice glint in her eyes and she's like, Hashita, I have a great idea. I looked at her and I knew that this idea would not have any good. You see, all of us have that one friend. You know that one friend that your parents warn you about, don't go out with him. That friend who will get you into trouble but escape themselves. That friend who just can't sit quietly like that. Now this friend of mine turned around and her brown eyes were filled with excitement and she said, Hashita, let's steal something from the store. I said, what? 
She said, let's steal something from the store. It will be so much fun. It will be such an adventure. I said, why would we do that? Let's just buy the shoes and let's go out. She said, look at the queue. It will be so fun. It's such a funny thing to do. Let's steal. And I was quite surprised. And then she continued. She said, don't be such a prude. This is something that we remember. These are things you need to do. I am not a kleptomaniac. But the 22 year old, year old girl back then thought it's a very good idea. Let's do it. Let's see how fun it will be. So then I very slowly picked up those white shoes, went to the child room and removed the tag and wore those shoes. My friend, very brazen that she, she just looked around, no one's looking. She pulled out a chain, threw the small tag away and she wore it. And then was the main point. She said confidence is key. Confidence is key. Just wear it and walk like nothing has happened. So I said, okay. My heart was beating loudly and I was very, very scared. But I remember her saying, confidence is key. So I just coolly walked out. Nothing beeped. Nothing happened. I walked slowly. And then my pace picked up. And then my pace picked up till by the time we reached the escalator, I was almost running. My friend also ran with me. And at that moment, we felt so good. The relief, the excitement of getting away with something like this. Oh my god. We were just so happy. We went to the food court and we ordered a pizza and we kept talking about what we did and how much fun it is and everything like that. And suddenly, I looked up and I saw, I saw an angry young man. It was an Amitabh Bachchan. This angry young man looked like a store watchman. And with him, stood an angry young woman and to my surprise that lady was a female constable. They came and they stood in front of us <laughs> and at that moment we went speechless. She said, Madam, we have a CCTV video of you stealing things. I said, no, no, I didn't do anything like that while I tried to hide my shoes behind. Ma'am, look at your shoes and the tables around us went silent. And I didn't know what to say. She said, Madam, we have a CCTV footage. This is too much. She started screaming louder and louder and louder. Now at this point, people had stood up and they were already taking videos of this incident so that they can share it on Instagram or I don't, I don't know why they were taking videos. But for me standing there, it was so humiliating. It was so humiliating. That police, the, the constable started frisking us and really humiliating us, saying that maybe you've taken something else, how can you behave like this? And I said, we really haven't. And she frisked us and checked. And I said, okay, the worst thing that could have happened is humiliation. I said, I'll pay, pay you back. She said, no, madam, jail, a police station, call your parents and come. And at that time, I was really scared. I looked at my friend and she looked like she wanted to run. At that moment, I told them one thing. The only thing that I told them is something I want to share with you today. April Fools, all of you! I didn't want to miss this opportunity to fool each one of you. I truly believe that each of you believed my story. But just to get it on record, I have never stolen anything. I will never steal anything. But I have to know, I have to take make use of this opportunity and fool all our postmasters. So at, at a Toastmasters club, we learn how to become powerful communicators. We learn how to listen. We learn how to narrate. We learn how to captivate an audience. Basically, we learn how to become great pranksters. So I hope you make use of this skill and become better speakers and better pranksters. And with this prank, and I'm sure we have a lot of other pranks to plan for today's meeting, I would like to open meeting number 119. Uh, to take the meeting forward, please come here. So we have two guests with us today. Our one guest is my Shetty brother. Would you like to introduce yourself?
on the date. He's a wonderful person. He has so many tricks. He can. He has all these card tricks in his hands. And also, last time he got a very interesting guest for our meeting. We said, bring a lot of guests, bring a lot of guests, and he took us very seriously. He got his dog also and came. He. Every time he comes on the stage, he is witty. He captivates the, atten uh, the uh, attention of the whole audience. And today, he's going to captivate us again. We would like to invite those past on today, TM Sunny on the stage. Oh. Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Those masters, I have a confession. Now, when I saw the theme of the day and the word of the day, Bruce, I saw that, it filled me with excitement. It so happens that the, when I looked at this word, the meaning of the word ruse, ruse is what? Trickery, deception, cunningness. And it so happens that I have a bit of experience when it comes to trickery and uh, maybe a bit of deception also. I'm going to show you right now what is what do you mean by the word ruse. You know, we can go and keep on talking, this is a ruse, that is a ruse. But let me in fact show you exactly what is a ruse? And I'm going to challenge all of you. Try to catch me. I'm telling you right now, what I'm going to show you is a ruse. Try to catch me. So everybody please stand up. Everybody please stand up and come and assemble near this table. Once again, this is... <laughs> okay, so I've got with me my pack of cards. Okay. So this is a regular normal pack of cards. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, this is. <laughs> this can, is I a, can I check? Please, please check. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, I would like somebody to inspect the cards and also someone who knows how to shuffle, please shuffle. Yeah. Yes. Professional. Just before you check the Okay. Anybody else wants to shuffle? No? Okay, Rakesh, come inside. <laughs> yeah. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to drop the cards from one palm to the next, like this. And while I'm dropping the cards, I would like you to say stop, like this. Stop. When you say stop, I'll stop dropping the cards. You pick up the top card from where you call stop. So it'll look like this. Stop, pick up the stop card, see the card, and show it to everybody. Okay, and I will be I'll be looking at the curtain. Alright, make sure I do not see the cards. I will be looking that side and I'll put the rest of the cards here. Basically, the idea is I must not see the cards. Okay, once again, this is a rule, try to catch me. Okay, so show the <laughs> So see the card, everybody see the card, everybody try to memorize the card if you can. And once that is done, put the card back in the pile and shuffle. Shuffle the cards as much as you like. And once the card is back in the pile, call me or let me know. I'll come and continue this rules. Okay, so just to recap, call stop, but you call stop. Pick up the card, the top card, show it to everyone. And then put it back and then let me know. Okay, so somebody else now shuffle the cards now that you know what it's going to be. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm just looking at the cards. Yeah, see, the cards. I saw it. You could be on with him on the rules. So you have to be careful. And the other way around. I want to. I know many tricks they pull out. Okay. All the cards are different. All the cards are unique, like any standard pack of cards. Ashish, you want to check again? No, I saw it. Just call the stuff whenever you feel like. There's some card, the top card. Okay. Not seeing. Don't show it to me. Yeah, I'm not looking. Show it to us. Show it to us. Show it to everybody. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not yet, may not yeah. Okay, hide it, hide it, hide yeah, it. Hide it inside. In the chat. Hide it inside. Hide it inside. Hide it inside. Hide it Sure. Not not shuffle, not <laughs> so the card is in there, right? So, okay, so while the shuffling is going on, I'd like to ask everybody over here. Um, do every, does everybody believe in mind reading? Yes. 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 Is there anybody who does not believe in mind reading, who's a little skeptical? Yes. You? Yes. Good. Come here. Okay. Now, this <laughs> I will also shuffle the pack to make sure I'm not cheating. Okay, Ashutosh. You know what the card is, right? Yes. You saw the card, right? Yes. And you you are skeptical when it comes to my reading, right? Yeah, like you can't read my mind. I can. Oh my God. <laughs> I want you to clear your mind and think of the card. Look at me. Yes. Think of the card. 
Now what's happening? I'm trying to read Ashutosh now. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> 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 you yeah, nasty things in that mind uh. over there. <laughs> <laughs> All the ruses that you've pulled over the years. <laughs> Struggling, but okay. Let's try. Okay. Okay. No, very difficult. Ashutosh is a difficult person to read. Yes. So we'll try something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle the pile and I'm going to split the cards into four roughly equal groups. One, two, three, four. Roughly equal. That's about right. Okay. Now, um, they just, there are four groups of cards over here. I want you to choose any two amongst these four. Choose two and tell me. The last two. These two? Yeah. Sure. No second thoughts? No second thoughts. Okay. Those two chosen. Okay. There are two remaining piles. Our guest, your name is? Ashwin. 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 Okay, Ashwin. Out of the, come, come this side, please. Out of the two remaining piles, choose one, left or right? The one on the left. My left. Sure? Yeah. 100% sure? Yeah. No second thoughts? No. This one? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Ashita, please come forward. Uh, this way. Stretch your hand like that. I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> Hold the cards like this. Okay. Hold the cards firm. Yeah. Okay. Don't look. I'm going to whack the cards, okay. but don't let go. Okay. Hold the cards firm. Okay. You all remember what your card was, right? Yes. yes. Nobody's forgotten, yeah? No. Okay. Watch this, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the store, and I'm not the store person. <laughs> <laughs> Your card is coming in three, two, one. Hold the cards firm. Okay. So there's one card remaining. Yeah, that's okay. We'll pick that up later. There's one card remaining in Harshita's hand right now. Yes, one card. What are the chances of this being the same card that uh, Rakesh chose at the beginning? Or 152? Impossible. Impossible? No, one Would you be surprised? Yes, yes, yes. Would, be surprised. Would you be surprised? Yes, yes. Take a Seriously? Yes. Oh, 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 Let's change the meeting to a different thing. I have seen everyone. No, ma'am. I thought it was going to be April Fool's. This is crazy, no? Ladies and gentlemen, what you saw over there is the classical rules. Magic. Rules. Now we are going to teach. I will. But before I teach, let me tell you, I knew the card was the Eight of Spades from the beginning. In fact, before you knew the card was the Eight of Spades, I knew the card was the Eight of Spades. How did I do that? So anyway, we'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> so if I knew that you know. <laughs> so if I knew the card was the Eight of Spades from the start, that also means that I knew which pile amongst those four piles. I also knew which pile card was in, correct? Right. Yeah. But then how did I know how did I know that the card ended up in that part? So you see if you backtrack it's all one ruse after the other after the other and more will be revealed as we go on later fights. This trick and more will be revealed. So like I said, that's a classical ruse. So Toastmasters, this is a I want to say special love performance for me, but just a demonstration of the theme of the day and how we go about creating a rule and executing the rules. But in a normal Toastmasters meeting, for the benefit of our guests, and we have a guest who has just walked in, can you please introduce yourself and what brings you to Toastmasters? I 
behavior that I am undergoing, and I want to have a better, you know, a better path in future speech uh, because I am in a role that I work in my corporate as client agent, and I want to be a agent to another level, the next level. So how do I do it? How do I get that? Welcome Shruti, you have come to the right place. All I can say is in Toastmasters we typically have the kind of requirement whether it's client facing or general public speaking or even just in interpersonal skills. Whatever you're trying to improve and develop, that and more can be found over here at Toastmasters. And speaking of Toastmasters, for the benefit of our guests who may or may not know, uh, Toastmasters meetings comprise of three sections. We have the prepared speech section which we are about to commence any moment now followed by a table topic session with which we improve our impromptu speaking skills and finally followed by our evaluation session in which we get uh, comments and feedback on how we can improve because as you pointed out, we are trying to improve our skills so it's important to know what are those areas that we can improve on. So, ladies and gentlemen, Toastmasters, without any further delay, let us start our prepared speech session. Yes. So, our first speaker today um, G -G. My bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, on the topic of feedback, we have uh, a person who's going to monitor all of the feedback that we will be getting. And this person is the general evaluator. Our general evaluator for today's meeting is Toastmaster Shubankar, an experienced Toastmaster. <laughs> Good evening, Toastmasters, and welcome guests. Good evening. Today, I I was going to ask you, you know idiots, generally, <laughs> <laughs> specifically three idiots, oh. we've all seen the movie, <laughs> but in that, there is a character called Bias, yes, he was just to be So I am going to take in the role of Bias today, I will be a general evaluator, who will keep you on track, I will be analyzing and to help me, there are four. Gold takers, not idiots. <laughs> four gold takers who will help me. The first one is T for timer and T for take. Can you please come from the stage? Good evening. Uh, 
range counter is to note down the words and sounds which are used as a correct and fast ways by anyone who speaks. In the meeting, I will be listening for pillar sounds such as Mm. They may be thinking, uh, but they will not be getting the proper word. That, that kind, that kind, they will be uh, using this kind of pillar sound. I will also listen for overused words such as actually, basically, properly, <laughs> <laughs> and well. But this kind of word. I will record when a speaker repeats the words. Like uh, I, I, R, R. This means, this means, this kind of words. And at the end of the meeting, I will record the number of times that each speaker. Try to avoid uh, this kind of expressions that are unnecessarily being used with the tutorial calling you out. Wishing you all the very best. Thank you so much. Back to the Next, we have from Great Britain, the Grammarian, JP007. Thank you. Good evening, I am a grammarian. As a grammarian, it is my responsibility to pay close attention to the speaker's language, improper and proper usage, and I will take the notes. Today's word of the day is Bruce is actually intended to be deceive someone. For example, how do you listen to the sentence? A sunny street of cars was an act of force. Uh, I expect each and every one to use the word of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have. Good evening, guys, uh, and good evening, uh, honorable guests. Uh, so, today I'm having a whole of listener, um, and here I would request everyone to listen. But then what is listening? Uh, so, listening is not only something that you get from somebody who's speaking, right? You get facts, you get ideas. It's not only that. Listening is also about giving respect, giving respect to the speaker who's talking. And so, and and that will also make him feel better. So listening is pretty important. So, and I would request you to listen. Now, when I say listen, means uh, what? Well, it would entail that you would give your full attention to the speaker. So basically, you are not you are attentive here and listening to him, and we will focus on that. The other thing is, you need to you need to uh, reserve your judgments within you. Don't add your failures. See, what happens here is, when somebody is speaking, he is speaking from his perspective. He is giving his point of view. But if you go into your failures, you may start a thought chain of your own and you miss what the speaker is, point, is talking about. Right? So giving, stopping your failures and just be listening. The third thing is, we need to, we need to avoid interrupting. Thank God and PM, the Toastmaster speak, we don't do that. But in case you have questions, you can always ask later from the speaker. And the fourth thing is to, to show interest in the speaker. And you can do that in multiple non-verbal non ways. To nod your head and to see the speaker. And many other ways. I'm sure you know. So I would request here to 
please be listening to the speakers here and just be focusing. Thank you. Benefit of everybody who has not participated in a Toastmasters meeting. A listener will generally listen to the speeches and tidbits of what everybody is talking about, and then he or she will uh, ask you questions at the end, so be attentive. And I challenge all my tag and role takers to scrutinize every speaker that comes on stage and have kind of a summary ready at the end because we might fall short in time. So have a summary ready rather than reading out each and every point that you have noted and add some value for the speakers. With that, I'm going to turn it back to the Toastmaster of today. Okay. How many of you believe that mind reading trick? Which we just saw, uh, just, just pretend it's that. Let me tell you right now that was a ruse. No such mind reading happened. So even though that was a ruse, our next speaker is going to be speaking about something that is, in fact, very important. He is attempting his level one project three speech, and the evaluator for that speech is Toastmaster uh, Piyush. Can you please? <laughs> The purpose of this project is for the member to practice using vocal variety or body language to enhance the speech and it is 5 to 7 minutes or the best to speak. Alright, uh, Toastmasters, our next speaker.